Hello my friends, today we're kicking off a super complete series of videos on how to set up your first aquarium. And the episode 1 is about what you need to buy first. Welcome to BSK Aqua. The first thing to consider when deciding uh, to set up an aquarium is the size. Many people make the mistake of starting with a small tank, thinking it's easier. But the smaller the tank, the harder it is to keep the water conditions stable. Small? Big? What's the difference? Fish fit just the same. I had a 10 liter one and everything was fine. Yes, Rick, but small tanks have less water volume, meaning any change in parameters, whether it's pH, temperature or ammonia, will be much more drastic. For example, if the room temperature rises, in a small tank the water heats up much faster. And when a fish poops or pees, ammonia levels can quickly spike and poison all the inhabitants. So the bigger the aquarium, the better. If the tank has more water, problems get diluted more easily than in a small one. Ah, so you're saying it's like an airbag for fish? More water, more safety? Good analogy, Rick. I recommend a 60 to 100 liter tank for beginners. This way, you have more room for the fish and for the filtration cycle to work efficiently. Plus, you can introduce more species and create a more balanced environment. And I already ordered a 20 liter tank. I made a big mistake. It's not a mistake, Rick, but you have more work. Size really matters when it comes to maintaining stable water. Oh, and don't forget, never place the tank in direct sunlight. We'll talk more about that later. We have the aquarium. And the second things to buy is the filter, the heart of the aquarium. This is something many people underestimate. They think any filter will work, but that's not the case. There are three main types of filtration. Mechanical, biological and chemical. Mechanical filtration removes large debris. Biological involves bacteria that process toxic compounds. And chemical removes water impurities like heavy metals and odors. And I thought filters were just to clean the dirt. That's a common mistake. People think filters clean the tank. No, we clean the tank, but the filters help catch some of the dirt with mechanical filtration. The filter is the heart of the aquarium and with a bad heart you'll have health problems. Same with the aquarium. A good filter should circulate at least 5 times the tank's volumes per hour. So for a 100 liter tank you need at least 500 liter per hour pump but I'll never go with less than 1000 liters per hour. A common mistake is choosing small internal filters that take up space inside the tank and can't support a healthy colony of bacteria. For tanks 60 liters or larger, an external filter like hang on back or canister filter is ideal. Can I turn off the filter at night to save energy? No, Rick, you should never do that. The filter has to be 24-7, except for maintenance, of course. If you turn it off at night, the bacteria will die. And the nitrogen cycle, which I will talk about later, will stop. Turning off the filter is like always starting the tank on day one. Ah, makes sense. But explain how those canister and hang on back filters work. I get that you don't like internal filters. Canister filter sits outside the tank and has multiple chambers where we can place different uh, filter media. You've got sponges for mechanical filtration and ceramic rings or bio balls for biological filtration. This type of filter doesn't take up space inside the tank and can move large volumes of water, which is great for keeping the ecosystem stable. So. The filter doesn't just clean, it helps keep the fish from getting sick. Exactly, Rick. Alright, 
I got it. I'll throw away the tiny internal filter. I'm learning more than I wanted. Now, before you even think about adding fish, there's something extremely important you need to do. The nitrogen cycle. I think I've seen a video where you mentioned that. But I just want to add fish the next day. And you can add them on the same day. I've covered that in the video in the in the card. I in this I don't know where the, the card shows. I will also put links um, in the description and talk about it more later. The nitrogen cycle is what keeps your fish alive long term. When you start an aquarium, there aren't enough beneficial bacteria to process the ammonia produced by the fish. This bacteria needs time to multiply and form healthy colonies in the filter and substrate. So, what kind of bacteria are we talking about? The ones I don't want in the tank, right? No, Rick. Did you forgot? We already talked about this. These are the good bacteria. They convert ammonia into nitrates and then nitrates into nitrates, which are much less toxic. If you don't let the nitrogen cycle happen, ammonia and nitrates levels can spike and poison the fish. Sorry, my memory is very poor. That's a lot of information to take in. So how can I start colonizing these good bacteria in my filter? To start the nitrogen cycle, you can use an ammonia source decaying fish food or even a commercial product with pure ammonia. You'll need a water test kit to monitor ammonia nitrates and nitrate levels. The full cycle without biological boosters take about four to six weeks. Biological accelerators? What is that? And I can't add fish the same day. I have to wait up to six weeks before I can add fish. How boring. Ideally no, Rick. You should wait until ammonia and nitrate levels are zero. Only then it is safe to add fish. But if you want to speed up the process, there are products uh, with nitrifying bacteria ready to introduce to the tank. But you can also speed things up by adding cycle media, dirty water from a mature uh, filter or bottled bacteria. I will leave a card for a video, I don't know where, where the cards uh, appear. I will leave a card for a video where I'll talk uh, about heading fish on the same day. All right, this all makes sense. We've talked about the tank and the filter. What else do we need to get started in the aquarium hobby? Depending on the type of fish you want, you may also need a heater, preferably with a thermostat. Depending on the type of fish, I don't get it. Yes, if you plan on having tropical fish that needs water temperatures around 27 degrees Celsius, you need to heat the water and keep it always at the same temperature. How am I supposed to heat the water? With a heater? Won't that cook my precious fish? No, if it has a thermostat. The thermostat will turn off if the water reaches or exceeds the set temperature and turn back on if it drops below that temperature, keeping the water just right. Now that we've bought the aquarium, the filter and the thermostat, let's figure it out where to place it. What do you mean? I'll just put it on any piece of furniture at home. Or are there rules for placing the aquarium too? Choosing the location for your aquarium is super important, Rick. You should never place it near windows or in spots where direct sunlight hits. That can cause temperature fluctuation and rapid algae growth, making maintenance harder. Oh, so I can't put the aquarium on the windowsill? I was thinking of giving the fish a nice view of the garden and sunbathing so they can absorb vitamin D. No, Rick. Besides the sunlight issue, you should also place the aquarium somewhere without too many vibrations. For example, don't place it near large speakers or on surfaces that shake often like office desks with computers on them. So, no putting the aquarium on top of the washing machine either. I get it. I was imagining the fish dancing. 
The fish dancing rig, come on! Choose a stable spot with no drafts or vibrations and of course somewhere you can enjoy watching the fish without stressing them out. Alright, I think I got it. And I hope you, who want to start this fantastic aquarium hobby, understand too. So, the ideal would be to buy a tank of at least 60 liters, a filter that circulates 10 times the tank's volume per hour, a heater with thermostat, and place it away from direct sunlight and vibrations, right? Exactly, Rick. That would be the ideal setup to start. And the light? You didn't talk about the light. The light without plants. No, Rick. The light is just for us to see the fish. They don't need a spotlight on their heads all the time. But that's for the next episode where we, we talk about the decoration, substrate, plants and, as you mentioned it, lighting. So my friends, leave a like, comment, share and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the upcoming episodes. I hope you enjoy and learn something. Thank you for your support and I'll see you in the next video, which is the next episode. Thank you.